Bicycle rims, love them or hate them, they're still a good source of extruded aluminum. Sometimes you might find a spoke stainless steel. I use a bolt cutter, just two at a time. They are under pressure. So, if you don't have anything protecting you here, cut it that way. Especially if you're a guy. Because it's generally crotch height. Your tailgate of your truck or your workbench. I don't know the speed that these come out of, but the amount of torque that's on them, and they're so tiny, they can, uh, yeah, they can put it this way, it'll hurt. <laughs> Been there, done that. You don't think of it until you actually do one. Hey, how can something that small, but hey, a bullet small too. Look what it does. In the shred bucket. These generally just fall right out. Little jiggle jiggle. When you do them outside, make sure they're accounted for. You get one of these in your tires, it's gonna come out the sidewall. And that one just slides off, and there you have a clean rim. You don't have bolt cutters, these work just as well. But they only do one at a time, not two at a time. Because I'm doing it in the garage, you know, you don't have to worry about it, it's just garbage. Sometimes they have a little rubber thing on them that'll stop them from shooting out at you. I'll show you, you can do them with the side cutters too, they work. Hear the tension that's on. Them. Just saying, if you don't have a pair of bolt cutters, the bolt cutters do two at a time, right where they crisscross. Wow, these are rusty. It made me question the rim too, because the rust is on the rim. These aren't going to come up that easy. They're seized in there. But, just like aluminum copper rads, i take the steel off, right? And these are all side cutters, bolt cutters. Mounts to the same thing. That little rubber thingy in there. Yeah, these are all seized in. I guess we're going to have to use the hammer. I did it once with my hand, but that didn't work so well. Wow, these are actually pretty stiff in there. Just loosen them up, I guess. I've never had one this seized up before. Oh, there's that little goofy rubber thing. You can see how old it is. It's just falling apart. That's trash. be a little harder to get off because he's got a big screw going through and he's that reflector on. You get the idea, right? A little persuasion. Yeah, they fall on the floor. That's fine too. You're in the, you're in the shock. pick up in the driveway. Let's see if you got a gravel driveway like me. These would blend right in so nicely. They would disappear. And then uh, the 
finish these off, you do know about the pins, right? I know most of you do. Valve stem hole. Opposite side. That's where the pins are in. Okay, magnet sticks. Generally, you're safe when you go to the first spoke holes. Cut them any way you like. My preference is the sawzall. Oh, you're in the way a little bit. I think you all know that. It takes a couple cuts. You have clean extruded. Whoop! Oh, look at that. You fell down on me. What the hell? Wow, has this tripod ever gotten loose on me? There we go. Are you alright? You didn't hurt your head or nothing? <laughs> Watch your ears. Where the pins are tucked in there. Can we get far enough away from them? Nope. Look at that, we left the pin behind. Ah, oh, there we go. It fell out, it was just a little piece. Now I like to cut them in half again, because then they're easier to handle. Right where the, right where the valve stem is. Easy place to bust them. There. Now they take up less space in your bucket. Clean extruded. And then this one here, iron and aluminum. Not unless you want to try to get those pins out, but good luck with that. But there you have it. Quick little show on that one. You might have seen it before, you might not, and then all the spokes just go in the bucket. Have a nice day.